Welcome to Al Jazari channel. Foundries offer creative minds almost unlimited possibilities. Advancements in new technologies and environmentally friendly methods have greatly changed the field, resulting in new and interesting professions. Casting has a long tradition. Around 400,000 years ago, humans learned to handle fire, but only about 6,000 years BC did they start using fire for firing clay, which was later used to create casting molds. Around 3000 BC, the iconic figure of the Indian dancer from Mohenjo-daro was cast in bronze. This ancient Mesopotamian princely head was created approximately 1000 years later. Around 500 BC, people began casting iron, and about 200 years ago, they discovered light metals like titanium, magnesium, and aluminum. Since then, the development of casting materials and methods has accelerated, reaching world-leading standards. Casting remains as fascinating as ever, and a modern world without cast parts is unimaginable. The main idea of the sand casting process is to pour liquefied metals inside a sand mold that contains a cavity with the required shape. Of course, the liquid metal takes the shape of the cavity. Once it has cooled down and solidified, we can remove the shaped part from the mold. The process begins with the customer's production drawing. From this, a mold design is created in the foundry's design department. This design enables economical production. To do this, the designer creates a mold planning drawing. In the past, drawings for the molds were created manually by technical draftsmen and designers on the drawing board. Today, designers and model makers work with computer-aided design systems, or CAD systems. Model-making designers must know the casting process well and have a good imagination because many drawings today are already represented in three dimensions. This is not easy, especially with complex castings. Sand casting mold consists of two parts. The upper part is called cope while the lower one is called drag. They contain the cavity and the gating system. The gating system consists of pouring basin. It receives the molten metal from the crucible. Sprue. It is the vertical channel that connects the basin to the gate. Gate. That allows the molten metal to enter the runner which is the horizontal part of the gating system that directs the molten metal to the mold cavity. Riser. It acts as a reservoir of molten metal to compensate for shrinkage during cooling. A pattern is needed to define the outer surface of the required part to create the required cavity inside the mold to shape the product. For sand casting process, the pattern is usually made of wood, however, it may also be produced from plastic or aluminum. The pattern may include the gating system as well, which is the passage that allows the molten metal to reach the mold cavity from outside. Moreover, a core print may be added to the pattern to allow supporting a core inside the cavity. While the pattern defines the outer surface of the required product, the core defines any internal surface enabling the sand casting process to produce intricate parts with internal cavities. The core is made of green sand and shaped using a core box. The shaped sand core is fired to give it strength. Both the pattern and the core box are fabricated using computer numerical control machines to guarantee good shape and dimensional accuracy. The detailed casting steps of this part will be explained. Starting with the lower part of the flask which is called drag. It is placed face down over a clean flat surface. The pattern, the gate, and the runner are placed in the middle of the drag. A fine powder is spread inside the drag as a release agent. This is done to avoid sand sticking to the pattern and the worktop surface. After that, fine sand is sifted over it and pressed to capture the pattern's details accurately. Then the rest of the drag is filled with backing sand layer by layer and compacted with rammer to make the mold strong. The coarse backing sand is used here to allow gas to escape from inside the cavity to outside through the spaces between these coarse grains. Previously, naturally occurring molding sand with clay as a binder was almost exclusively used. Today, synthetic molding sand is commonly used in small and medium foundries while resin-bound molding sand is employed for casting very large parts. The excess sand is removed and a flat surface is created. 
The drag is finished now so it is inverted and pattern edges are smoothed. Now the upper mold half for the cope is placed precisely on the drag that has already been finished. To keep the cope and the drag in the right position they are clamped. The upper half of the pattern is positioned in place using the aligning pins followed by adding the sprue and the riser. All the steps done to prepare the drag are repeated here to make the cope. Starting by powdering, sifting and pressing the fine sand. Then the rest of the cope is filled with coarse sand layer by layer and compacted with rammer. The sprue and the risers are removed to remove the extra sand to make the surface flat. The pouring basin is introduced at the top of the sprue. Once the cope is finished, the mold is open to remove the pattern. The pattern is carefully removed with the help of a bolt. A detailed cavity for the final casting is created. Any loose sand is blown by air. After that carefully place the core inside the cavity. Then close the flask and clamp it. The mold is now ready for pouring. In this example, a standardized aluminum casting alloy with 11% silicon is used. The molten metal is brought to the mold inside a crucible with the right amount and poured into the pouring basin at a constant rate, where it fills the mold cavity, capturing the shape of the mold cavity. Continue pouring until the mold cavity is completely filled and the extra molten metal fills in the risers. During cooling the metal solidifies and shrinks. To compensate for this shrinkage material is drawn from the risers. This waiting period is crucial to ensure the cast part forms correctly without defects. After the metal has partially cooled to around 300 degrees Celsius, 572 degrees Fahrenheit, the cast can be removed. To take the part out of the mold, the sand mold must be broken. To break the core, the cast is lightly tapped with a hammer. After removing the part, it must be cleaned to remove any sand traces and the gating system is cut. One of the advantages of sand casting is that it can be used to produce huge parts like this. Ship engines. Molding on a large scale, such as here in the production of an engine block for a ship's diesel engine, is something special. Casting such large castings puts everyone involved under tension. Around tons of molten cast iron are transferred in ladles to the mold in less than a minute where they are poured inside the mold and solidified into a cast part. D Despite all the technology, there is always much emotion behind it. Sparks fly here, and the work looks spectacular. However, thanks to the appropriate protective equipment, the work is very safe. In the cast cleaning room, the gating system and the risers are cut from the engine block. Another example of huge part casting is in a wind turbine. The heart of the wind power wheel hub is this component alone, which weighs almost 10 tons. The approximately 35 meter long wind blades are attached to it. We want to follow the production of this large part. The production process is the same as previously explained, only in a much larger dimension. The molds are made from quartz sand mixed with resin and hardener, which cures in just 1 to 2 hours. Ceramic pipes are seamlessly integrated into the molds forming part of the gating and feeding systems. The process involves creating massive sand cores, weighing up to 6 tons, to shape the internal geometry of these components. These cores are reinforced with armatures to ensure safe transportation and are coated with water-soluble ceramic layers for protection against the extreme temperatures of molten iron. The foundry workers fill one part of the mold with sand and compact the material. Once finished, the mold is lifted from the top and turned over. The interior of the cast part requires different cores, one each for the main and middle core and two for the outer surface. The finished sand core weighs around 6 tons. All cores are added piece by piece. Ceramic filters are placed in their intended position in the mold to ensure that no slag is washed into the casting when pouring. When all cores are in their position, the one on top is placed. 
When the sprue has also been placed on the mold, the mold is ready for casting. While the foundry workers prepare the mold, someone else in the smelter prepares the melt required for the casting. Watch as ductile iron is carefully poured into molds. The molten iron is precisely guided to fill the molds, showcasing the expertise of the foundry workers. After the casting cools and solidifies, the components move to the fettling shop, where they are cleaned, stripped of gating systems, and prepared for further processing. This video explores the simplicity and complexity of the sand casting process. Witness the remarkable craftsmanship and advanced techniques that power industries like wind energy and shipbuilding. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about metal casting processes, follow Al Jazari channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you again.